Today in our 2010 Mazda CX-9, we're going to install the Kurt 4-Pole Wiring Trailer Connector, part number 56016. Now to use our new 4-Pole Connector, we'll simply open up the rear cargo area, the storage compartment, taking our 4-Pole Harness, running it out over the rear threshold. Stay away from the latch as pinching off in the latch can damage the wire. However, our weather stripping is thick enough that we can simply close the rear hatch on it. Then we can take our four pole connector and run it down to our hitch and use it with our accessory. Then once we're done, we'll simply open up the rear hatch, the rear storage compartment, where we're gonna house the four pole connector. To begin our install, we'll first open up the rear hatch. We need to remove the rear flooring and storage tray. To do that, there are two push pin fasteners that'll need to be removed. To remove the push pin fastener, we need to pry out on the center of the fastener and then we can remove it completely. Now with the fasteners removed, we'll go ahead and pull the tray out. Next, we'll remove the corner trim here. And to do that, we're just gonna use a flat blade screwdriver, prying up, releasing the fasteners underneath. Here we can see the fasteners underneath. Next, we'll remove the rear threshold. To remove it, we're just gonna start on one corner, gently pulling up to release the fasteners underneath. Now with the threshold out of the way, we're gonna move over here to the driver's side trim panel. You need to remove the covers over the cargo hooks. Underneath, there are fasteners that'll need to be removed. Now once we pull the fasteners out, it'll release the rear quarter panel. As you can see, there are two here on the bottom. We also have two on the top for a total of four on each side. So keep in mind, each process we do here on the driver's side is gonna get repeated identically on the passenger side. Now on applications equipped with an auxiliary speaker here in the back, it may be necessary to take it out to, so that we can pull the panel out and gain access to the manufacturer's wiring behind the panel. To remove the subwoofer, we're gonna first disconnect the wiring. We'll press on the locking tab and separate the two connectors. Now once we've separated the two connectors, we'll remove the fasteners that secure it in place. We've got a total of six fasteners, three here in the back, three more in the front. Now we can pull the subwoofer system up and set it aside. Next, we'll go ahead and get in behind the panel with a flat blade screwdriver or an interior trim panel tool and release the fasteners underneath so we can gain access to the wiring behind it. Then we can fold the panel back. Now once we have the panel back, we can locate the manufacturer's taillight wiring connector. One end will run to the back of the taillight, the other up towards the manufacturer's main harness. We'll need to separate these two connectors. To do that, we'll press on the locking tab, separating the two connectors so we can install the new Kurt T1 connector. This is the yellow, brown, red wire connector. We'll go here on the driver's side and plug directly into the manufacturer's harness as our two connectors will match up to the manufacturer's harness. Here we have the taillight plug going directly into the T connector. On the other side, we'll then go into the wiring harness connector. Next, we're gonna take the white wire that's attached to the wiring harness and comes from our converter box. This is the white wire has a pre-attached ring terminal. 
it will be the ground for our converter box and four pole connector. To ground it, we need to run it to the sheet metal. Now because this vehicle is equipped with a metal bracket and bolt that goes into a weld nut, we can use this for our ground. We'll pull the bolt out, install the ring terminal onto the bolt, and then resecure it. Now with the bolt out, I'll slide the ring terminal onto it and then reinstall it. Now I've got one more wire attachment here on the driver's side. That's going to be the black power wire from our converter box. We need to attach it to the extra length of long black wire provided with our install kit that will ultimately get run to the vehicle's battery or battery power. To connect the two, we'll make sure we strip back both and take the yellow butt connector, provide it with the install kit, slide it in place and crimp it down. And on the other side, basically repeat the same process. Now, once we have it crimped down, I'll give it a quick tug to make sure it's locked in place. Then I recommend to wrap up this connection point with some black electrical tape to help keep it free from dirt, dust, debris, and moisture. Next, we're gonna mount our converter box. To mount the converter box, we'll use the two-way adhesive provided with the install kit. We can remove one side of the adhesive, attach it to the converter box, and then the second side, and attach it here below the driver's side tail light assembly. Now, when in looking for a suitable location, recommend finding a clean, flat location, and preferably sheet metal. Now once it's in place, we'll firmly press into position to get a good cohesive connection. Next we're going to take the green wire harness and connector and route over the passenger side so we connect to the passenger side taillight wiring harness just like we did on the driver's side. For my routing, I'm just going to follow the manufacturer's wiring harness as it goes across the rear threshold area. Once we get it over to the passenger side, We'll go ahead and set it down as we need to remove the fasteners and panel on the passenger side just like we did the driver's side. Now here on the passenger side we'll locate the same style connector, press on the locking tab, separating the two. We'll bring the green T connector up into place, plug into the manufacturer's taillight harness and wiring harness connectors. just like that we've made the connection here on the passenger side. Now with all our connections made here at the rear of the vehicle we need to take the extra length of black power wire that we attach to the converter box. We're going to run it outside the vehicle up along the vehicle's frame as necessary until we get to the bottom of the engine compartment where we can route up the firewall and ultimately to our battery power. Now to get outside of the vehicle we're going to go through the manufacturer's grommet. We'll use our utility knife to cut a small slice in the grommet and then feed our wire through pulling it underneath the vehicle. Next, using the zip ties provided with our install kit, we're, we're going to secure our wiring here in the rear of the vehicle and then reinstall the interior panels. We'll just secure our wiring here to the manufacturer's harness, cut off the excess from the zip ties, clean up our install look and get them out of the way. And we'll do this as necessary to secure the wiring. We set the large tray back in position. We'll also take the four pole connector, route it into the tray, where it'll be stored when not in use. Now with our interior back together, we're gonna move underneath the vehicle and start running our power wire. 
Keep in mind when running your wires, stay away from any moving components such as steering or suspension or excessive heat such as exhaust. As we route our wire, we'll also secure it as necessary with the zip ties. Now once I make it up here towards the bottom of the engine compartment, to make it easier routing through the engine compartment, you could use a pull wire, which could be a stiff piece of wire. In this case, we used a piece of air tubing as we ran it down from the top of the engine here to where we gain access to it. We'll attach our power wire to our pull wire and then use the pull wire to pull it up to the top of the engine. Now once I've finished routing my wire underneath and securing it, I'm going to cut off the excess from the zip ties to clean up the install look and then move to the top of the engine compartment. Now once we have our wire at the top of the engine compartment, we can remove the pull wire and I'll use a zip tie to secure it here to the manufacturer's wiring. Next, we'll take our power wire and route it over towards the positive battery post. We can remove the positive battery post cover and see our attachment point. Next, we need to install an inline fuse holder on our power wire. This will be the red fuse holder provided with the install kit. So we'll figure out the length of wire that's needed and go ahead and trim off the excess. Once we have that removed, we can go ahead and strip it back prepare to add a butt connector. Next we'll go ahead and prepare our fuse holder. Stripping back both sides so we can add a ring terminal to one side that will attach to our positive battery post and the butt connector to the other so that we can attach it to our power wire we ran from our converter box. Now once we have this connection point crimped, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up with some black electrical tape just like we did the butt connector at the back of the vehicle. Now with our butt connector wrapped up, we're ready to go ahead and attach to the positive battery post. We'll loosen the nut on the post stud. Once we have the nut off, I'm going to pull the stud all the way out, slide the ring terminal on, slide the bolt back in place, and reinstall the nut. I would go ahead and tighten it back down. Note with the added washer on there in some applications it may be necessary to then hold the stud as you tighten it back down. Now we've got it nice and tight. Pull the positive battery post cover back up into place. Now if it doesn't fit well after adding the ring terminal you can cut a small slice in the cover to allow for it. like that. Next we're going to go ahead and put our fuse into the fuse holder. Then we can take our zip tie, run it through the fuse holder, and secure it to the manufacturer's wiring. I'll go ahead and cut off the excess from the zip ties to clean up the installed look. We're ready to test our new four pole connector. Now to test our new four pole connector, we're gonna take our ground clamp and put it on the white wire terminal. Testing the brown wire terminal, which is the next one over, will be the running light circuit. The yellow wire will be the driver's side turn signal and brake. The green wire terminal will be the passenger side turn signal and brake. Now we know our four pole connector works, we're ready to hit the road. 
And that'll do it for the review and install of the Curt T-Connector Vehicle Wiring Harness with four pole flat trailer connector, part number 56016 on our 2010 Mazda CX-9.